Welcome, everyone. Welcome, Ambassador Mori. We're glad to have you. And uh, first and foremost, thank you, Professor Nishino, for joining us at Asia Society here in New York. We're really happy to have you. Today, we're going to be unpacking uh, an issue that is tremendously important, and it's particularly important personal to me because it's an issue that I've worked on over the years in my career in government and since I've come to the Asia Society, the relationship between Japan and the Republic of Korea. So my very first assignment as a diplomat a long time ago was in Tokyo. Mm -hmm. My third assignment as a diplomat was in Seoul, South Korea. And in between, I was stationed here in New York at the US mission to the United Nations where I worked hard on issues uh, involving Japan and pertaining to Korea, including uh, North Korea, and also including the uh, entry of the Koreas as full members of the United Nations, something that uh, we had to, only the Cold War really, really made possible. Later in my career, I worked for President Obama, and I uh, was involved uh, very directly in the efforts to try to facilitate an improvement in the relationship. Uh, President Obama hosted two uh, summits, two trilateral summits, long before Camp David with then uh, Pre President Park Geun-hye and uh, with Prime Minister Abe Shinzo. And when I worked for John Kerry, uh, his counterpart and the person in, on the Japanese side that really, really made that progress possible was the then foreign minister, uh, Kishida, who's now, of course, prime minister. So um, this is a, a personal topic to me. But that's enough about me. Let's talk <laughs> about you. We want to hear from you, Professor Nishino, but before we delve into the uh, the substance. I wondered if you could start by telling us a little bit of, about yourself and, and how you got interested, how you got involved in uh, Korean affairs. And you're not just involved. I know that um, when President Yoon was preparing to make his sort of breakthrough visit to Tokyo, he got a lot of invitations from a lot of different places uh, who wanted him to come visit and come speak, and uh, he chose you. He chose to come to Keio University and give a speech. So um, there's got to be a reason for that, and we'd love to know more about your background. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for the Asia Society for uh, organizing the event and invite uh, having me today. Uh, thank you, uh, the Vice President Danny Russell, the, uh, also having me today. So as you mentioned, uh, fortunately, uh, we Keio University had the president Yoon Song Yeol he, when he uh, made a visit uh, to Japan last year, uh, March. Uh, he, uh, as far as I know, he, uh, President Yoon, strongly want to have a, a dialogue with the younger generation in Japan. And he want to send a very strong message to the younger generation in both uh, nations, uh, Tokyo and Seoul. Then uh, he, he asked uh, our university to uh, have a dialogue with students at the Keio University. And uh, we uh, uh, accepted, and uh, he visited after the, uh, had the meeting with Prime Minister Kishida uh, last year, uh, March. So he, uh, uh, his speech was quite uh, significant and uh, uh, impressive. He, he mentioned, uh, he, he, he uh, talked to the students uh, like this, Japan and South Korea, South Korea and Japan. Uh, it's not only a neighboring country. Uh, we, ha we share a fundamental uh, universal uh, value, uh, like uh, uh, human rights or the rule of law, something like this. Then uh, we need to uh, play a, a leadership role in the international community. I think this uh, means that uh, President Yoon uh, really aware uh, that uh, we, Japan and South Korea, uh, should uh, be and must be a so-called natural partners in the international community. But uh, very, uh, due to very unfortunate uh, 
situation, deteriorated our bilateral relations for the over the past 10 years, we could not. But now it is time for two countries to realize uh, to be a natural partner. And uh, actually, I uh, started the study, Korea studies, uh, almost 20 uh, years ago. Uh, actually, I, I originally interested in the international relations in East Asia. But when I was an undergraduate student, uh, the North Korean leader, uh, Kim Il-sung, uh, died. Then I started to uh, interest. Uh, pay more attention to the uh, Korea affairs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I uh, was in Geneva negotiating with the North Koreans uh, when the news came in 1993 that mm -hmm. Kim Il-sung had died, and uh, that was a pretty pretty dramatic moment. Right, right. So um, you mentioned the visit of President uh, Yoon suk yeol to Tokyo, and came to KO, that was a groundbreaking uh, gesture. And one of the things that made a strong impression on me, and I think is symbolic not only of the, uh, the, the shrewd way that both Prime Minister Kishida and President Yoon have worked the effort to promote reconciliation, um, but also shines a, a, an interesting light on politicians was um, the meal that they had of omu rice. Mm -hmm. Americans don't rice. know what omu rice <laughs> is, <laughs> but it's a sort of hybrid word of omelet and rice. I mean, it is about as simple a meal as you could possibly design. And um, President Yoon let it be known that omu rice was one of his favorite dishes, and the Japanese side cleverly, I think, arranged to have uh, Prime Minister Kishida take the president of Korea to a restaurant that was the, ori the originator of this omu rice dish. Right. And I mention it in part because it really points to something consistent with what you described, which is the priority that President Yoon placed on speaking to students, speaking to young people, which is that humanizing uh, a foreign leader, humanizing the relationship, making it real, and uh, tapping into something that everybody can relate to, right? What you eat for dinner. Uh, and also showing your appreciation of the other side's culture. President Yoon didn't insist on eating bulgogi in Tokyo. Uh, and he didn't go for anything fancy like uh, sushi or kaiseki. So I think that is, there's an important clue mm -hmm. as to what it's going to take to ensure that that detente is resilient. Right, right. So as you well know, that again, because we had a very difficult uh, relationship for about 10 years, and uh, frankly speaking, uh, we, we lost kind of the trust relationship. But uh, now, uh, thanks to the President Yoon's strong leadership and his sincere attitude towards Japan, uh, now we uh, started to restore and almost restored uh, our trust relations, especially between the uh, leaders, uh, between the Tokyo and the Seoul, Kishida-san and the President Yoon song yeol uh, We, Japan and South Korea, had the uh, summit meeting last year seven times, quite amazing, mm -hmm. and uh, a foreign ministerial meeting six times, and we restored uh, various uh, high-level governmental meetings, like uh, vice ministerial strategic talks, high-level economic uh, dialogue like this. This is quite uh, amazing. Now I think uh, uh, we needed to consolidate. Uh, uh, we we uh, consolidated our base uh, to develop our bilateral ties. So this year, 2024, is quite important for bilateral uh, relationship to make sustain sustainable uh, bilateral ties. Well, Nishino Sensei, before we delve too much into this year, and the look ahead. Um, let's look back a little bit, and maybe you mm -hmm. can help us to understand sort of how this transpired. President Yoon was elected, or was inaugurated in, I guess, May of uh, 2022, so almost two years ago. Um, not long after that um, was the Madrid-NATO summit. Mm -hmm. uh, and 
very, very importantly and interestingly, um, not only Japan but Korea also was invited as a uh, guest to the NATO summit. So uh, the two leaders found themselves together. Can you tell, sort of, tell us the story of how the this um, progress took place? So the uh, during the presidential uh, campaign of South Korea, uh, so President uh, Yun at that time the candidate President Yun, uh, the candidate Yun, uh, tried to uh, mend a tie with Japan, and he repeatedly uh, mentioned his hope <coughs> to uh, develop the bilateral tie between Tokyo and Seoul. But uh, uh, at that time, two years ago, uh, many Japanese, uh, including the Jap Japanese government official, uh, really concerned about uh, South Korea's uh, position uh, in dealing with so-called the uh, wartime labor issue. Uh, in 2018, a South Korean Supreme Court ordered a Japanese company to compensate, uh, the, uh, to give money to the uh, for former Korean workers. And uh, uh, at that time, the former Moon Jae-in government, uh, frankly speaking, uh, not so the, the strongly the, uh, didn't the make uh, its effort to, to, how can I say, the solve the, the issue uh, mm -hmm. given by the uh, Supreme Court ruling. But uh, uh, after the embarkment of the uh, young government, uh, President Yun uh, firstly he tackled this very difficult uh, issue uh, between the Tokyo and the Seoul. Uh, he expressed his new uh, solution uh, and he, he repeatedly uh, tried to uh, make uh, progress in bilateral ties and finally uh, he expressed, uh, he, he delivered uh, his new way of uh, solution in, in this difficult uh, uh, matter uh, last uh, May. Uh, uh, last uh, March, uh, uh, March, last year March, mm -hmm. then the uh, Japanese government appre really appreciate uh, his, uh, his effort. Then, uh, as far as I know, the Japanese government invited President Yun to Tokyo. This was a kind of the, the trajectory of restoring bilateral ties. So as you mentioned, uh, yeah. there are a couple couple of the uh, meeting in, in 2012, but at that time, the uh, Japanese government, from my perspective, are uh, still cautious <laughs> to uh, shake hand with uh, uh, President Yun. But uh, uh, if my memory is correct, uh, two years ago, uh, when the Prime Minister Kishida and President Yun met in this uh, New, New York, uh, so after the, this meeting, the, the, the uh, former Prime Minister Aso also visited uh, Seoul, yeah. and the Japanese uh, high-level uh, politician uh, really impressed by the President Yun's very strong uh, resolution and uh, strong uh, intention to uh, improve the bilateral ties. Then the uh, Japanese government uh, decided uh, to uh, make new era uh, with President Yun. This is uh, what uh, I, I know. Well, w one of the things that uh I noticed was the decision by, by President Yun to uh, visit the Japanese embassy after the assassination of former Prime Minister Abe to sign the condolence book. And uh, for the President of Korea personally to go and to do that, I thought, um, was a gesture that would resonate among uh, Japanese people, and I think it's sort of symbolic of uh, his determination to try to change attitudes and to improve the relationship. I'm tempted to ask if uh, the kind of progress that was made could have been possible during uh, Abe government or uh, Suga government. Um, we may never know how much uh, credit is attributable to Prime Minister Kishida, as I mentioned. Uh, he played an indispensable role in uh, making possible the earlier Comfort Woman Agreement and um, other forms of progress. Um, I will say that um, President uh, Obama, when I worked for him, and Vice President Biden, when 
I worked for him, um, had many discussions with then Prime Minister Abe about uh, the Japan-Korea relationship. The logic then is the same as the logic today from the perspective of the US government. Namely, the challenges that the three democracies and the open economies face in the region are so serious that we can't afford the handicap of uh, Tokyo and Seoul being unwilling or unable to, to fully cooperate. And I think that was uh, an argument that Prime Minister Abe had no trouble understanding and hopefully made a difference. What, I, what I'm curious, though, about is this. Um, when we would go to Seoul, uh, the Koreans would say to us, tell the Japanese to th this, you know, get them to do that, be on our side. When we went to Tokyo, we heard exactly the same thing in the <laughs> other direction. Like, you know, help us, uh, put pressure on them. Um, and I don't want to compare Japan and Korea mm -hmm. to a married couple, but I am reminded of what I heard from a policeman uh, once that um, it's more dangerous to intervene in a domestic dispute uh, than in a bank robbery because uh, in a domestic dispute, both parties are going to be angry at you. <laughs> so that's a long-winded way of asking you a little bit about the mm -hmm. Camp David meeting uh -huh. and what, what did the Biden administration do? What did they do right? What sort of role has the U.S. had in facilitating this progress? So because we Japan, uh, Japanese and South Koreans think that the uh, United States, U.S. is the most important uh, partner, alliance partner uh, with us, then uh, we always expect, uh, expect uh, your support. But uh, uh, my personal uh, thought is that uh, uh, regarding history issue, uh, we needed to, Japan and South Korea uh, needed to solve our uh, problem by ourselves. Uh, but uh, in regarding uh, the, the, as you mentioned, the, uh, in addressing the uh, international, very severe international uh, situation. So the, in this context, uh, we needed to uh, tackle uh, together, uh, not only with our South Korean counterpart, but also with the alliance uh, uh, member uh, with the United States. And uh, uh, I really hope that the Biden administration, U.S. administration, uh, to uh, continuously uh, institutionalize our trilateral cooperation, uh, which agreed uh, by the uh, Camp David summit last year, uh, uh, August. This uh, definitely uh, contributes to the uh, all three countries' national interest, and uh, not only to the national interest, but also to the uh, interest of the, our uh, three countries' citizens. Well, I'm curious about your sense, talking about Camp David, of what some of the important elements were uh, that came out of that, that meeting. So the, uh, when it comes to trilateral cooperation among the US, South Korea, and Japan, we always talk, talk about the cooperation against the North Korea's military threat. Yes, it's true. But it is important, uh, uh, the, in, my, in my understanding, it's important for three countries this time to agree uh, cooperation uh, beyond the North Korean issue. I mean the cooperation in Indo-Pacific region. So now we, uh, our three countries uh, have a very uh, similar, almost the same Indo-Pacific strategy. And then uh, we agreed to expand our cooperation, not only in the area of North Korea, but also the uh, in, in the Pacific. Then uh, three countries established various uh, dialogues such as uh, in, the ta in the Pacific uh, dialogue or a dialogue uh, to uh, facilitate uh, developmental assistance to uh, the, in, in the region. So we wanna, uh, I want to see this kind of the very uh, wider cooperation uh, not in, in, the, in the Pacific. Yes, it's true, still North Korea's military threat is quite eminent and uh, we needed to uh, tackle with very, uh, this uh, difficult uh, issue. Then we also uh, agree, as you, went, as you well know, realized the uh, real-time information sharing on the North Korea's ballistic missile, and we established the 
multi-year uh, joint exercise plan. So these are, uh, uh, I mean, the security or military cooperation is, is still important, but I, I, I want to see more uh, wider cooperation, not only, the, only in the military aspect, but also in diplomacy or, or economic prosperity like this. This, this was a kind of the uh, achievement at the Camp David, I think. Understood. Well, I'd like, I'm going to come back to that um, because I think it is worth unpacking um, how, what sort of progress uh, has been made. It's been almost a year now since Camp David. But you raised North Korea, and North Korea is an issue that uh, I worked on uh, through my career um, without a lot to show for it because the situation is <clears throat> far worse today uh, than it was when I first started dealing with uh, North Korea, I, I absolve myself of responsibility for, for that fact. Um, so I, I know that um, the threat from North Korea can serve as a sort of unifying force because Japan and Korea have uh, a shared threat um, perception. But I'm curious also about what you think perhaps are some of the differences in perspective uh, between Tokyo and Seoul. And I was intrigued to hear uh, Kim Yo-jun, the, the sister and senior uh, family member, uh, sister of Kim Jong-un, uh, talk about the possibility, dangle the possibility of Prime Minister Kishida visiting Pyongyang. What, Talk a little bit about uh, both what's going on and w how the perspectives in Seoul and Tokyo might differ. Yes, uh, first of all, the, uh, yes, uh, we, Tokyo and Seoul, have uh, sometimes different uh, perception uh, towards North Korea, but uh, it depends on the uh, government in South Korea. When the South Korea have a progressive government, this means that the uh, South Korean government tend to show more uh, how can I say, friendly attitude towards North Korea and try to uh, reconciliate with North Korea. But mm -hmm. uh, uh, when we see the uh, conservative government in South Korea, uh, they tend to uh, emphasize more uh, deterrence uh, against North Korea's military threat. Uh, the, now, the, now we have a uh, uh, Yoon song yeol government, conservative government in South Korea. This means that uh, uh, I, uh, as far as I, uh, in my observation, Japanese government and the South Korean government uh, policy position toward North Korea is quite similar. Uh, so, the, uh, yes, especially given the uh, North Korea's very, uh, how can I say, uh, provocative uh, action towards the, to, uh, uh, to us. Uh, but, uh, yes, uh, in my understanding, there, there, there is a, a slight uh, differences between uh, now Tokyo and Seoul. So, the, as I mentioned, now Yun Song Yeol government is taking very tough position towards uh, North Korea and uh, try to uh, emphasize the, the, the deterrence uh, power against North Korea. And uh, President Yun always say uh, that uh, uh, so, uh, the peace through strength, uh, peace through strength. This means that uh, uh, South Korea show more uh, muscle toward North Korea. Uh, yes, uh, uh, as far as I know, the Japanese government uh, quite uh, support Yun's uh, new North Korea policy. But at the same time, so we uh, always, Japanese government and many Japanese uh, always think that we also need diplomacy uh, towards North Korea because we have a very uh, outstanding pending issue, abduction issue. Uh, so to uh, solve this issue, to make a progress this issue, we need uh, anyhow dialogue with North Korea. Uh, the reported three, uh, Japanese government, Prime Minister Kishida, uh, had uh, uh, informal dialogue uh, with North Korea last year, but uh, I'm not sure this uh, informal uh, interaction is still going on. So uh, the, given this uh, background, uh, now the, I think North Koreans, uh, North Korea, Kim Jong-un and Kim Yo-jong, uh, sent a very uh, signal to the Japanese government, but uh, I don't think uh, North Korea is really, uh, how can I say, enthusiastic to uh, mend the tie uh, with Japan because the, as North Korea uh, Chairman uh, Kim Jong-un expressed 
Now, uh, North Korea uh, needed to develop its nuclear uh, and the missile capability more. Then uh, they, they tried to uh, have a dialogue with the United States to realize uh, not denuclearization talk, but uh, uh, arms uh, management, arms control talk with the United States. But uh, it's true now North Korea is quite difficult situation, especially economically. Uh, I think they may uh, want to have some kind of uh, breakthrough, and uh, this is a uh, uh, this is uh, what, uh, given these uh, the circumstances now, uh, Kim Jong-un and Kim Yo-jong sent a very tricky message to Japan. Uh, the, in my observation, uh, Japanese government, Prime Minister Kishida, uh, the, want to, how can I say, uh, the grab this opportunity to very uh, small, op not so big, but small opportunity. Uh, but b because uh, Japanese government and Japanese citizens really desperate to solve our uh, difficult abduction issue, uh, to make if uh, the when if we uh, wanna make some uh, progress, I think Tikshida san uh, will try to uh, have a dialogue with uh, his counterpart in North Korea. But uh, uh, frankly speaking, I don't think. Uh, at, at this point, North Korea is really the sincere uh, in, in, in mend ties with Japan because uh, Kim Yo Jong's statement uh, she made uh, February fifteenth. Uh, uh, she she mentioned like this: she doesn't may come to Pyongyang if Japanese government uh, uh, changes the stance of the abduction issue. If if uh, Japanese government abandon uh, the the uh, it's thinking that the, uh, the abduction issue is important, but it's not totally unacceptable for the Japanese government at this point. Interesting. Well, look, um, Tokyo, Washington, Seoul, others have been trying to have a dialogue with Pyongyang uh, for quite a while, and uh, Tokyo has, mm -hmm. over the over the decades, had uh, multiple dialogues about the abductees with North Korea, but with the single exception of uh, Prime Minister Koizumi's visit to Pyongyang, uh, it, the problem has been that North Korea has not been sincere, has not engaged. Mm -hmm. So to what extent do you think that uh, perhaps Kim Yo-jong's motive uh, in suggesting that if Japan changed its stance on the abductees, mm -hmm. uh, which is kind of silly. It means we'll negotiate with you about anything other than what y you want to negotiate with us. Mm -hmm. But um, to what extent was she just trying to uh, drive a wedge between Japan and Korea? Because uh, closer ties between Japan and South Korea are probably seen as a real threat to North Korea. Uh, yes, you are right. Because now, so as we are discussing the now, the we are we've seen the very uh, rapid de development and uh, improvement of our, our bilateral ties. North Korea uh, does not want this situation and try to be, uh, drive a wedge between the two countries. Not only between the two uh, countries, but also uh, driving a wedge among three countries, uh, including uh, Washington. Uh, but uh, at the same time, I I would say that. Uh, uh, North Korea may want to see the kind of the internal uh, conflict inside North Korea by uh, by generating so-called uh, progressive and conservative uh, conflict in South Korea. So we call say in Korean language nam nam kaltum. Uh, so the now the progressive side in South Korea really criticize in government policy, very tough policy toward North Korea, but uh, then then uh, North Korea, uh, especially the, uh, this year, expressed. Uh, change of the uh, North Korea's policy to South Korea. They they say that uh, no, South Korea is not is now not the same nation. Right. But at the same time, Kim Yo Jong and Kim Jong Un sent a very uh, friendly uh, signal to Japanese government. Mm -hmm. Then uh, many uh, progressive people in South Korea think that uh, because of the Yun's very uh, tough policy, now North Korea ignores South Korea. But uh, North Korea uh, tried to. Uh, approach Japan. Uh, Japan. This is not 
uh, this is uh, not what the South Korea uh, want, especially uh, the progressive people in South Korea want. Then this uh, will generate the, right. uh, conflict in, inside not inside yeah. South Korea. It, it, uh, because so as you uh, as we well know, the, uh, coming April, South Korea have a general uh, general election. So the South, uh, North Korea uh, may have some uh, intention to make confusion. Mm -hmm. So for the Japanese government, um, it is a very uh, tricky path to walk to, on the one hand, um, deal with the politics and the legitimate uh, passion among Japanese people to try to rescue uh, the abductees, and on the other hand, not to fall into the trap that right. North Korea has right. set uh, right. that would not only alienate uh, South Korea from Japan, but right. would uh, deepen the political uh, divide within South Korea itself. I get that. Well, you mentioned the severe international uh, environment, the severe regional environment. Yes, and Prime Minister also mentioned severe inter because of severe international situation. Yeah, we needed to cooperate not only with South Korea but also other like-minded countries. Actually, the South Korea is one of the uh, most important like-minded country uh, for Japan. Uh, then uh, the Kishida-san uh, decided to made a tie with South Korea. Actually, the two years ago, uh, Kishida cabinet revised our national defense strategy. When we see the, this, this new strategy, uh, we have three pillars. One is uh, uh, enhance our own defense capability, and second one is uh, create, obviously, uh, enhance our alliance partnership uh, with, the, with the United States. And the third pillar is quite important at this point. So the uh, first, uh, the, the network and the partnership with like-minded country because the, not only Japan, but also the, every nation in the, in the world thinks that, uh, uh, frank, frankly speaking, now the uh, U.S. power is uh, relatively uh, declining. Uh, yes, still uh, we needed a uh, strong alliance partnership, but uh, we need more uh, partners and like-minded countries. This, uh, this really uh, contributes to tackle with very severe international situation, especially in uh, in the Pacific, in East Asia, we have uh, uh, China as a neighboring country. So the, uh, we are more uh, partners in, in dealing with this, uh, this difficult uh, problem. Well, I, when I, uh, in, in government, uh, when I w went to the, to the White House, was um, frankly surprised to see the extent to which people in, gov in the U.S. government underestimated the, uh, the influence, the engagement, uh, and the importance of Japan in the Asia-Pacific, in the Indo-Pacific. In the level of Japanese investment, for example, mm -hmm. uh, is greater than that of China. Um, the active diplomacy of Japan uh, with ASEAN, as well as on a bilateral basis, um, the the effort to build ties with India and draw India uh, more closely into the right. the life of the uh, Asia Pacific uh, was a Japanese initiative, um, and it took a while I think for Americans to really grasp the uh, contributions that Japan was making. In part because uh, Japan makes them pretty quietly. Um, so to the extent that uh, not only Japan and the U.S., but Japan and Korea can align and coordinate uh, their engagement with this network of partners, the impact is obviously going to be multiplied. Mm -hmm. But back to the severe uh, international environment, I often uh, hear that as code for China. Mm -hmm. uh, and you mentioned China. So bringing back the focus to the uh, to Japan and Korea, could you talk a little bit about attitudes and per perceptions of China from Tokyo and from Seoul? How much overlap is there in the perception, the threat perception, the, the understanding or the attitude towards the challenge that Chinese behavior and 
uh, presents, and how much divergence, how much difference mm -hmm. is there, do you think? So in my observation, uh, again, now we have a Yonsoru government in South Korea, and uh, uh, actually uh, we, uh, we've seen the narrowing gap uh, between Tokyo and Seoul regarding the per uh, perception uh, toward uh, China. And uh, now President Yun is taking uh, uh, new, uh, not new, new policy toward China, and uh, not only new policy toward North Korea. So he, he uh, President Yun really tried to realize mutual respect relationship with China. Uh, this means that uh, uh, because China uh, exercised very uh, severe economic retali retaliation uh, to South Korea when the South Korea decided to deploy third missile system in 2017, uh, then uh, the actually the, this uh, economic retaliation happened. Now, then now, uh, according to the opi various opinion poll, many uh, South Koreans are really, really have negative view yeah. toward China, around over 80%, yeah. sometimes around 90%. Yeah. So then, the, given this uh, uh, the national uh, perception, now uh, Yun, Yun is taking a very uh, tough uh, principled uh, approach toward China. Actually, this uh, policy really is similar to uh, Japan's stance toward China. Uh, but uh, yes, uh, there is a kind of uh, uh, difference. First one is uh, still, the, anyhow, uh, progressive or conservative uh, government in South Korea, actually uh, China is a very important stakeholder uh, in dealing with North Korea still. Uh, this means that uh, uh, South Korea uh, cannot ignore uh, China's uh, position and the Chinese influence over North Korea. This is the first one. Second one is uh, that uh, economic relation with China. Yes, it's true. Uh, the most of the nation in, in, in the world uh, has, a, has a China as a number one trader partner at this point. But the South Korea's perspective, uh, China's shadow is quite huge, quite huge. Uh, Japanese think that uh, uh, we, uh, Japan and China, in a way, uh, in a way, is an equal partner or strategic, uh, make a strategic relationship. But uh, uh, South Koreans uh, does not think so. Uh, China, uh, South Korea thinks that China is a very, very big, huge a panda in this region. Uh, so this is a kind of the perception gap. And the Chinese side also uh, see differently Japan and uh, Tokyo and Seoul. Uh, the, in my observation, China sees Japan as a uh, China sees that the, uh, China and the Japan relation uh, will be a strategic uh, relationship, but uh, they does not think South Korea like this. Uh, they, uh, China think uh, South Korea is a kind of a junior partner. This, this really uh, generates <coughs> negative sentiment in South Korea toward China. Mm -hmm. This is the current situation. But again, uh, at this point, uh, fortunately, uh, we, we've seen very diverging uh, the, the perception between Tokyo and Seoul toward China. And this also uh, now uh, is contributing to, to developing our bilateral ties. Well, um, I mean, it's worth remembering that China has invaded Korea dozens of times over the last, I don't know, 600 years or mm -hmm. so, um, and never invaded, uh, never succeeded in invading Japan, in fact, Japan is the one who invaded China. Uh, so that could account for a little bit of uh, difference. Right. Um, I think dealing with North Korea obviously is a, is a major uh, area of divergence um, because the tremendous priority that understandably South Korea places on uh, dealing effectively with the DPRK, although nothing in the record suggests that uh, uh, making nice to China is going to translate into China's uh, pressure on North Korea to behave, let alone to come into compliance with its international obligations. So I think there's a little bit of wishful thinking there. Uh, yes, and uh, so the, uh, we, Japan and Tokyo, uh, does not want to have a conflict situation with China. We want to uh, make stable. Uh, relationship with China. And in this context, Kishida, Prime Minister Kishida always say that uh, uh, Japan wants to make a constructive and, uh, uh, constructive and stable relationship uh, with China. And uh, again, uh, Japan wants to uh, re re recreate a strategic uh, 
mutually beneficial uh, right. relationship uh, with China. Right. And uh, uh, President Jung also again mentioned he wanna establish mutual respect relations. This uh, actually, I think this uh, two uh, position is quite uh, similar. True. Uh, in dealing with China. There is one thing though that's very different, um, which is that in San Francisco, uh, President Xi Jinping uh, was willing to sit down and hold a meeting with Prime Minister Kishida, whereas he w he refused uh, to meet with uh, President right. uh, Yoon suk yeol So there's clearly the commonality in the desire for uh, mutually respectful, mutually beneficial, constructive relationship. Uh, that's the attitude in uh, Tokyo as well as in Seoul. But it's not the attitude in Beijing. Right, so I think that China is still, the, in a way, uncomfortable to see the rapid recovery of our, our bilateral ties. But uh, uh, in my observation, the, nevertheless, uh, Japan and South Korea try to realize another trilateral, CJK, China-Japan ROK a summit meeting this year. Uh, we, uh, Japan and South Korea, always think that, uh, yes, China's uh, shadow is in a way, uh, how can I say, uh, sometimes give a negative impact, but uh, at the same time, anyhow, <laughs> we need a very constructive relationship with China to realize this uh, constructive tie with China. We want to uh, realize the summit meeting, CJK uh, summit meeting this year. and. Uh, uh, Fortunately, uh, last year, November, we already had the uh, trilateral CJK foreign ministry meeting. Then next, uh, we can go to the uh, realized summit meeting. I really hope uh, trilateral CJK uh, summit meeting, as well as a uh, uh, very dramatic uh, achievement of the, our uh, AJK, uh, US-Japan ROK uh, trilateral. This, these two trilateral uh, relationship is really uh, important for Japan and South Korea. And, uh, and uh, in addition to uh, this, now we, Japan and South Korea, also try to realize another so-called minilateral cooperation with Australia, with India. So these are really uh, important uh, dynamism now uh, happening in, in the Pacific. Yeah, I very much agree. I think the, uh, the growth of these minilateral uh, arrangements many of which are sort of purpose fit. They're specific to certain kinds of uh, objectives and certain kinds of problems uh, are very useful and very important, uh, particularly in an era when some of the larger regional or international organizations are stuck, in part because of uh, the intense strategic rivalry and uh, disagreements between the US and China or or Russia. On the trilateral side, you know, I started hearing last summer that the uh, CJK, China, Japan, Korea trilateral meeting would be resumed. Uh, Wang Yi uh, indicated that he was interested in uh, restarting it. Ironically, uh, it seemed to me, once he saw the Camp David process uh, really take take flight. Um, but it seemed like it took forever for the even the foreign ministers to meet. October, November, December, finally they met. I heard at the time that the, the summit, the leaders would meet soon after that. But we're already well into February. It hasn't happened yet. Who's dragging their feet? Why is it taking so long? <laughs> Well, uh, so as you mentioned yeah, at the event uh, in San Francisco, still the uh, Chinese government, Xi Jinping side, were well, having some kind of reluctance uh, attitude towards uh, have a very cooperative uh, relationship with uh, Tokyo and Seoul, and uh, they may uh, hesitate to uh, remain uh, our tie with uh, Tokyo, uh, with, to with Tokyo, uh, Beijing, and Seoul, but. Uh, uh, in my personal observation, because now Xi Jinping started his third term, and because China is now having have a very difficult situation in its economy, I think uh, China also want to uh, uh, have a very stable and managed uh, situation in, in this region. But uh, uh, 
but uh, the one, uh, how can I say, uh, concern is the uh, Ty Taiwan Strait issue. Mm -hmm. uh, so they now uh, we will see a new uh, Taiwan president. Uh, this uh, new president position uh, in dealing in, in addressing the, uh, the the Taiwan Strait issue is quite uh, important, not only for the uh, China and the Taiwan uh, relation, but also the. Uh, relationship is in this region, international yes. relation in this region. Yeah. Well, I very much want to talk about uh, Taiwan. If, but before we leave the trilateral, uh, two questions. One is um, the Chinese government has la launched an aggressive propaganda campaign uh, against the release of treated water from mm. Fukushima. Uh, that's not a particularly friendly act, and it's pretty ironic considering that Chinese reactors along the coast, each one of them releases more tritium than uh, Fukushima will. Um, nevertheless, um, that's inconsistent with uh, the idea that uh, the Chinese want to stabilize or improve the relationship, although maybe they have dialed that back. But it was clearly uh, also aimed at Japan's neighbors. Mm -hmm. And in South Korea, it had a certain degree of resonance. So I'm curious about um, where that stands and whether that has uh, subsided. But secondly, the CJK trilateral does not involve Xi Jinping. Right. <laughs> um, it, it will involve uh, Li Chang. Right. And it's very heavily Kenya. economic uh, in its orientation. Mm -hmm. So could you say a little bit about um, what is different in the economic relationship between uh, Korea and China and Japan and China? Because um, China is a hugely important economic partner for both of you. Mm -hmm. The first question is the uh, kind of the, uh, reaction in South Korea. Yeah. Uh, yes, first of all, I, I, I would say that, uh, yes, uh, uh, frankly speaking, many South Koreans are still concerned about the uh, Japan's uh, treated water. But uh, uh, thanks to Kishida -san's, Prime Minister Kishida's uh, bold decision uh, last May, he uh, visited Seoul. Uh, so he, Prime Minister ex ex Kishida, expressed the exception of the, the on site uh, delegation from South Korea and the disrealized. And, uh, uh, Yun Song Yeol government, uh, at, at the same time, Yun Song Yeol government uh, really he showed the, how can I say, uh, firm position that this uh, matter should be addressed by scientifically. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and scientifically. Then, then now the, uh, many South Koreans uh, really, he, how can I say, still have some uh, concern, but uh, relatively he show uh, understanding uh, in, in dealing with very uh, difficult uh, Fukushima uh, uh, nuclear power plant. And uh, second question, uh, regarding the second question, uh, still, still, yes, it's true, still uh, for South Korea, China is a really biggest economic partner. But uh, at the same time, uh, now the, if we see the economic uh, relationship, especially trade relationship between the uh, Seoul and Beijing, now, uh, uh, South Korea uh, export uh, import uh, the more than the export. Uh, this means that uh, uh, and and at the same time, now the South Korea is uh, e exporting more and more to the United States. Uh, so we can see the kind of the uh, change of the economic relationship uh, of South Korea. Uh, so South Korea tried to diversify uh, its economic relationship more and more than before. Because now the, we are in the era of economic security, and the South Korea tried to diversify its uh, supply chain. Uh, in this context, South Korean government, especially young government, uh, really uh, want to show the economic uh, cooperation, uh, especially the, the supply chain cooperation, uh, not only with Japan but also with the United States. Uh, the Japan is, uh, I, I think, I think the uh, same situation. Uh, so yes, uh, we Japanese uh, Japanese company, many many Japanese company now investing in China, but at the same time, so because uh, uh, now uh, we have a very uh, severe uh, 
uh, era of economic security. Now, Japan, I think the Japanese government also tried to diversify the, uh, its supply chain and uh, kind of the uh, friend, uh, make a uh, friend shoring. So uh, as one, one reason is as by the administration also pursuing this kind of new uh, economic security policy. And uh, Japan and South Korea, in a way, uh, support and uh, uh, go together with uh, President Biden's new policy. This is the current situation, I think. See. Well, I, there are two other questions that I want to raise, and then we'll open the discussion to all of you. So um, please be thinking about what you want to ask Professor Nishino or what you heard from either one of us that you either don't agree with or maybe not don't, uh, don't understand. So you mentioned Taiwan. Mm -hmm. um, there has been a, a, a significant shift in messaging from the Korean government, uh, including at Camp David, where President Yoon uh, signed on to a statement making clear that uh, uh, and this was an indispensable element of security, I think the statement said, uh, whereas Korea had been pretty reticent to talk about uh, Taiwan or the Taiwan Straits uh, up until then. Can you talk a little bit about the perceptions of uh, the Taiwan issue? What does it look like from Tokyo? What does it look like from... Korea and how different are they? Uh, the, in my understanding, many Japanese are seriously taking Taiwan issue because see, we have a, a Senkaku issue with China, and uh, this kind of the military, uh, how can I say, uh, expansion in, in in the region, especially East China and mm -hmm. West China Sea, is quite kind of the uh, a threat for many Japanese. And uh, uh, the former Prime Minister Abe mentioned uh, like this. Uh, Taiwan contingency is Japan contingency. I think that many uh, Japanese uh, share this kind of uh, the perception because we often say that uh, uh, we only have about 110 kilometers from Taiwan to the Okinawa Yonagoni Island. This means that uh, it's too close to escape from Taiwan contingency for Japanese. So we need some uh, direct uh, action when something happens in, the Ta in Taiwan. But uh, uh, as far as I know, th uh, South Koreans are, have kind of different uh, thinking. They, they want to, uh, in a way, uh, want to take a distance from Taiwan contingency because still, as I mentioned earlier, still uh, the South Koreans think the China's threat, China's, China's uh, the very, very big shadow is uh, quite, how can I say, uh, pay more attention to. This means that uh, South Korea want to uh, take a distance from Taiwan contingency, but uh, uh, because the uh, Japan, South Korea, and the United States agreed to uh, kind of the commitment to consult, uh, this means that uh, when something happened uh, in the region, we three countries needed to consult, uh, hopefully to make joint action against the situation. This means that uh, now, now is the time for uh, two or three countries to discuss seriously about the possible uh, what can I say, contingency, not only uh, in Taiwan, but also on the, on the Korean Peninsula. Uh, then in this context, uh, President <coughs> Yoon expressed uh, South Korea position uh, with some uh, interviews uh, with foreign media like this. Uh, when something happens on Taiwan, uh, South Korea's first task is to deter North Korea's uh, military provocation. Yes, I, I, I think it's true and it's okay uh, for me or for many Japanese experts. Uh, frankly speaking, many Japanese ex expect South Korea uh, will play some important role when something happens in, in Taiwan, but uh, it's not unrealistic. Uh, so then we, Japan and South Korea, need kind of the uh, division of role of responsibility. So I, I think the Japan uh, needed to uh, play more direct role in Taiwan contingency. But uh, uh, South Korea's task, uh, firstly, is to <coughs> deter uh, North Korea's provocation. When, because when something happens, uh, if something happens uh, in Taiwan Strait, then uh, North Korea uh, may try to utilize the situation and make some provocation uh, on the Korean Peninsula. So we need to avoid this situation. Then South Korea's first task to, uh, to deter 
uh, North Korea. Uh, this is a, a kind of the division of labor. But hopefully, uh, we want to uh, discuss kind of the uh, future possible uh, joint response. Uh, then uh, uh, when I talk uh, with South Korean uh, counterparts and uh, South Korean colleagues now, uh, they also want to play some role like uh, uh, mind-sweeping or like this because many South Korean, especially uh, security experts, think that uh, Taiwan Strait is really important for uh, South Korea's economy. It's yeah. a kind of sharing of communication. Right. So South Korea th thinks that, uh, uh, yes, uh, they, they also uh, needed to uh, protect uh, the, this uh, SROC when something happened in mm -hmm. Taiwan country. So, so I can think the, uh, we need to discuss this kind of the, uh, possible cooperation seriously uh, uh, in this year. I agree with you. I've also heard many times from Korean friends uh, the concern that uh, South Korea can't really commit to support uh, uh, any kind of response to uh, military action on, across the Taiwan Strait because for, uh, they have to be focused exclusively on uh, North Korea, who is likely to take advantage of the uh, chaos to invade or something. But on the other hand, um, leader signaling uh, is an important element of deterrence. And I can't help thinking that it would be a smarter position to uh, say publicly that uh, South Korea was very confident that it could handle uh, North Korea um, and at the same time would lend full support to uh, Japan-US effort to stabilize the Taiwan Strait on the ground that um, that's, a, that's a better deterrent message because what we want to do is to prevent either China or North Korea from actually using uh, military force. But last question, and I'll ask it because I know if I don't, somebody will. The sensitive issues between Japan and Korea, the, the tough history issues, comfort women, uh, forced labor, the territorial dispute over what uh, we all have different names for. We call Leon Court Rocks. Uh, Japan calls Takeshima. I think yesterday was Shimanikin's Takeshima Day, uh, what the Koreans call Dokdo. Um, this sort of series of perennial uh, tough, tough issues that are very emotive, uh, very difficult. Um, they haven't gone away. And yet there is uh, this growing progress and willingness to cooperate uh, both from the Korean government and the Japanese government. And I think uh, more and more popular support as people see uh, the benefits of that cooperation. Are, are these problems uh, things that can be solved? Is it simply that they have to be managed? Can they manage? Can they be managed? Um, and what is the prognosis uh, mm -hmm. in the year ahead? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the, in my personal observation, still the, this uh, difficult issue uh, remain. And yes, uh, it is true that uh, President Yoon uh, showed his strong uh, resolution uh, to solve this issue uh, by uh, proposing the new formula. Uh, the, this means that. Uh, uh, compensate uh, the wartime ravers uh, through the, uh, the the foundation uh, third party, uh, but uh, uh, this still have a difficulty in in, in the uh, dynamics inside South Korea. So, the, so President the, Yoon is having difficulty implementing his. Uh, yes, 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 yes. The, the court ruling, uh, the various court ruling have a different. Uh, the different direction uh, which President Yoon proposed, but uh, uh, President Yoon, South Korean government at this point still uh, continue to uh, stick this uh, new short, new formula. Uh, so the, the, from the Japanese perspective, uh, really, uh, Japanese really hope that uh, uh, President Yoon uh, continuously uh, try make uh, uh, make his effort to solve. Uh, this issue uh, by pro the third the, uh, sad party. But at the same time, I personally think that uh, uh, it, 
it's also important not only for President Yun but also Prime Minister Kishida to show more, uh, make more effort in in gaining the public support and understanding not only from South Korea but also from Japanese. In this context, uh, South Koreans uh, always uh, say that uh, uh, Japanese side show more sincerity. Uh, I think yes, it's true. Uh, Kishida -san, Prime Minister Kishida can uh, do more, and actually uh, he showed his sincerity again he visited uh, Seoul last May but I can I, I think the Kishida -san can do more and then uh, Japanese government is now implementing uh, this kind of uh, measure uh, uh, to uh, take a kind of the uh, initiative in realizing the future oriented uh, bilateral ties and I want to uh, mention that the next year uh, we Japan and uh, Seoul have a 60th anniversary mm -hmm. uh, of opening our diplomatic ties. Now, as far as I know, the both sides uh, hopefully and, uh, uh, try to uh, realize new kind of new joint declaration, if possible. So the, through this uh, new through this effort this year, uh, I expect that uh, uh, two nations, Tokyo and Seoul, uh, reached a new uh, uh, era. So this is my hope. My hope too. <laughs> All right, thank you. So um, we're going to turn it over to you. Uh, John has a microphone, so uh, raise your hand and let me call on you. And we want to hear from you and uh, your questions, please. Hello, thank you so much for your time today. Um, I'm Sarah from the Apex Study Center at Columbia University. Um, so my question is with the upcoming US election, could you speak to Japan and South Korea's views on a possible Biden-Trump rematch and implications for the trilateral relationship? Thank you. Uh, election in the United States, right? Yes. Uh -huh. So I know you slightly try to avoid this <laughs> topic. <laughs> I do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, uh, it's my uh, really personal uh, view. Uh, yes, uh, there is a growing concern about the uh, possible uh, new government in the United States. Uh, but uh, anyhow, again, uh, so we, uh, Japan and South Korea, think the US, uh, United States is really an uh, important alliance partner, uh, even if uh, we have uh, uh, any different uh, uh, administration in the United States. Uh, but frankly speaking, uh, in my uh, observation, now the many South Koreans are really uh, how can I say, uh, anxious about, concerned about the, the, the emergence of Trump administration. Be because uh, when we see the first Trump administration, uh, at that time, the President Trump uh, tended to uh, put less emphasis on the alliance partnership, uh, especially with South Korea. And uh, so as we all know, uh, he really loved uh, transaction with the uh, chairman Kim Jong-un. So because then, but, but now Yun song -er is taking a very opposite uh, stance. He, he, he really put uh, his emphasis on the alliance partnership with the United States and also, again, as I mentioned, uh, taking very tough position toward North Korea. So the South Korea, many South Koreans hope that uh, uh, even if by the administration uh, re-emerge, uh, the, the new administration will take the uh, uh, same position uh, as now the President Yun is taking. Uh, uh, in 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 uh, in Japan, I think the uh, in my observation, uh, we Japanese have a kind of the uh, how can I say uh, confidence, and uh, we believe that uh, we can uh, manage, we can well uh, manage our uh, relationship with the United States. This is a, we, because we have a, a long history of the alliance management with the United States. Uh, Yes, uh, leadership chemistry and the leadership is quite important, but at the same time, the governmental interaction and uh, uh, so like you, uh, the, the really uh, the expert in, in dealing with the, this kind of uh, alliance uh, is quite important. And we, fortunately, we always have a very alliance manager, both in this region. Well, we appreciate that vote of confidence. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, the floor is open. Don't be shy. Ambassador, please.
Thank you, Danny, for this opportunity. Um, unlike uh, Professor Nishino or yourself, Danny, I was involved in um, uh, Japan-Korea relations or, or South Korea very limitedly. Over uh, 40 years of my experience in diplomatic service, I, I briefly touched upon North Korean issue for two years, 20 years ago only. But nevertheless, I believe uh, the partnership, close partnership between uh, Japan and uh, Korea uh, is very important, not only for the regional stability, but also global or prosperity, economically or in terms of security. And uh, in, in that respect, uh, you uh, suggested many uh, prospects to the future. What uh, governments can do, uh, Japanese government, the Korean government, or prospect of Korean election, or even uh, U.S. position. But uh, what I think uh, is uh, uh, also important is people-to-people uh, -people relations between uh, South Koreans and Japanese. And as I, in my limited experience, I saw uh, quite substantial uh, residual uh, sentiment among South Koreans against Japanese. Uh, you, you talked about this uh, treat water, water, uh, treated water issue, but also uh, in uh, uh, Takeshima doctor issue or in uh, um, uh, comfort woman or so-called forced labor issue. There always a very substantial portion uh, of, uh, of Korean population who is uh, uh, strongly uh, feeling sense of antagonism against uh, Japanese, not only government, but in some cases Japanese business or Japanese public. Oh, and Japanese public uh, reaction uh, at the same time is quite reactive. When we see uh, some anti-Japanese movement in uh, South Korea, Japanese people uh, come to dislike Korea. But under the current situation, since uh, President Yoon's management is very well, uh, the Japanese uh, public sentiment against vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, South Koreans are uh, drastically improving. So what do you think uh, um, both people can do? Uh, I mean, uh, uh, Korean people and Japanese people, as well as American people in, in some way, uh, to uh, solidify or make it sustainable uh, the Japan-Korea part partnership in terms of social relations. Thank you. I'm so glad you raised that. That's a really important point and a really important question. So thank you, Ambassador, for question. Uh, the first question is about the, the kind of the yeah, cooperation uh, in the international community. Fortunately, now, as you well know, President Yoon is taking uh, his new policy. Uh, he want to become a global pivotal uh, state, South Korea. Uh, South Korea as a global pivotal state, which means uh, uh, contribute more uh, to the international community. So this uh, new, Yoon's new policy really uh, make a diplomatic space for two countries to cooperate more in the uh, worldwide. Because the uh, Japanese government uh, ha has been taking uh, uh, the, the free and open in the Pacific. Uh, and uh, Yun, uh, President Yun also delivered uh, South Korea's uh, in the Pacific strategy. Now, uh, the, we, uh, our uh, foreign and national security strategy is really uh, converging. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, not only the, in bilateral context, but also in trilateral uh, context, we established many uh, consultative body uh, to realize, uh, to implement this kind of new cooperation in the international community. And uh, uh, moreover, uh, so here is in New York, now the Japan and South Korea is a, a non permanent member of the Secu Security Council, a UN, United Nations Security Council this year. Uh, this means that uh, uh, so two countries really it, it tackle uh, together uh, uh, to the uh, very difficult international uh, issue at the UN Security Council. It's really uh, quite important uh, moment uh, for two countries. Uh, regarding the second question, uh, frankly speaking, I'm not so optimistic, but uh, I want to be cautiously optimistic of the power of the uh, next future uh, generation. As the ambassador mentioned, uh, yes, uh, 
actually education in both uh, nation really matter. South Koreans, uh, South Korea's education uh, is really put emphasis on the kind of the uh, colonial period, but uh, uh, many Japanese students uh, did not have this kind of education. Uh, this makes some uh, difference uh, in the perception uh, when we see the, uh, the counterpart. But uh, so as President Yun put his emphasis on the uh, exchange, people to ex people exchange uh, in the younger generation, and actually uh, in the in trilateral context, now uh, we three countries have a trilateral youth summit uh, coming September in yeah. Busan. So this kind of the the, the youth generations uh, people to pick, exchange uh, the the will have a. Uh, uh, positive impact to our uh, relationship, but it will take a long, long time. Uh, but uh, uh, we needed to continue to uh, realize this kind of the project. At the same time, uh, and then uh, the uh, government cannot, uh, how can I say, uh, shape all of the direction, but the government ca can support, support uh, and encourage our people to people exchange. So without, uh, I, I mean that without the governmental uh, support, actually, uh, it's, we can see it's, we are seeing very natural people to people exchange, especially in between the Tokyo and Seoul. We, we have only just to our right, actually. Uh, so in my case, I, I uh, go to Seoul uh, almost the every week, uh, the usually, usually once or twice a week, oh, at wow. once or twice a month. Uh -huh. uh, so, but when when we uh, take a flight, uh, talk between Tokyo and Seoul, so many younger generation and so many uh, parents, <laughs> then they are really enjoying. And this this will uh, definitely uh, contributes to our uh, building our healthy relationship in the near future. Great. Thank you. Well, wonderful question, uh, terrific answer, uh, and a great uh, conversation. Professor Nishino, I really appreciate you uh, coming and uh, giving us a chance to hear from you. I appreciate all of you coming. Um, this event will be posted on YouTube and on our website. Um, if you're not already a member, I hope, as Neelam said, you'll become a member, uh, sign up for our emails, uh, and get more access to our arts and culture uh, programming, our educational programming, our policy programming as well. So thank you all for coming, and please join me in thanking Professor Nishinoa and Ambassador Mori.